Welcome to the Vendor Training Course, Photo Documenting a Property's Condition. In this course, I will discuss the proper way to access and document a property's condition utilizing photos. Let's begin. Properly assessing the condition of a property is important, but it is equally important to provide photo documentation of your findings. The following four rules must always be followed when documenting a property's condition. Rule number one. Do a full and comprehensive assessment of the entire property utilizing photos to show all aspects of the interior and exterior, including each side of the house, outbuildings, garages, the driveway, yard, roof, attic, and basement. This must be performed on every visit regardless of the specific type of work order. Rule number two, always take clear photos. Photos should not be blurry. If you are having trouble conveying what you are trying to with a photo due to insufficient natural light, use a flashlight when taking the photo. Always check photos for clarity before uploading them to the system. Rule number three. The photos taken must show all conditions at the property, whether it's damaged or not. And rule number four. All photos must be properly labeled and uploaded in the vendor web. This is important because the labels provide context for everyone who reviews the order, including safeguard, clients, and investors. Now that you know the rules, let's review the different photos that are required throughout the property. We will start with the exterior. Photos must be taken of all sides of the property, including each side of the house, as well as all windows and doors. This also applies to any outbuildings present at the property, such as sheds and detached garages. For best practices, photos should be taken from both angles, including front to back and back to front. You are also required to take photos of the roof. Ground level photos will not suffice. Photos must be taken from on top of the roof. Be sure to provide photos of protrusions in the roof and thoroughly examine chimneys and any other attached structure for potential damage. Photos should be taken of chimneys, vent stacks, flashing, satellite dish mountings, and all gutters. The roofs of all outbuildings should also be examined and photographed. Any damage on the exterior also needs to be photographed. Both a zoomed out photo and a close up photo of damages are required. For example, if there is flashing missing from a chimney, take photos of the entire chimney structure where it is attached to the roof line and close up photos of the damaged or missing flashing as well. As mentioned before, if outbuildings are present at the property, you are required to provide photos of them showing each corner of the structure and its windows, as well as the outbuildings interior, including each wall, the floor, and ceiling. Now let's move to the interior of the property. You will start with documenting the interior of the roof and the attic. A detailed assessment of the attic is imperative, especially if roof access was not possible and you were therefore unable to examine the roof's exterior. Photos must be taken from inside the attic and should include, but is not limited to, the rafters, joists, underside of the sheathing, and inside of soffit and fascia area. If an active roof leak is found, close-up photos of the damaged area are required, as well as any evidence showing that the leak is active. Best practices for determining an active roof leak include looking for visible puddles, checking ceilings, and the underside of sheathing for dampness, as well as pulling back insulation to check for moisture damage. Also, look for sunlight coming in from inside the attic, especially around plumbing vents and chimneys. Any discoloration in the framing, joists, and ceiling should be photographed. For a better understanding of how to identify an active roof leak, refer to the video Assessing Damages to a Property's Roof. You also need to take photos of the interior living areas, as well as finished and unfinished areas of the basement. Within each of these rooms, a minimum of six photos should be taken, including photos of all flooring, walls, and ceilings. A best practice is to take photos from each corner of every room to capture the entire room's condition. Ensure that the type of flooring, such as vinyl, tile, or wood, is evident in your photos. You should also take photos of all mechanical items located in the basement, such as the water tank or furnace. Other photos to include should document the condition of all plumbing lines, such as toilets, sinks, traps, the water heater, and furnace. These photos should be taken whether there is damage or not to provide documentation of the condition of the visible plumbing lines. Support structures and posts in the basement should also be photographed. Zoomed out and close-up photos of any interior or exterior damages are required. Be sure to include photos of the source that caused the damage. The photos are critical to determine bid approvals and to verify if the damages are worsening. 
If the property is post-sell, you will need to have documentation photos relevant to the debris removal process. Photos should be taken according to placard parameters. Ensure that in photos of rooms, placards are present and showing accurate totals of debris specific to that room. Progression load photos of the truck or trailer being utilized to remove the debris need to also be taken when the vehicle is one-fourth full, half full, three-fourths full, and full. If the property is pre-sale, you will need to take photos of debris with placards to accurately show and describe the debris amounts. In pre-sale, for you to submit a bid for removal, multiple photos of debris in a room are necessary. The usage of placards is required when bidding more than 10 cubic yards and it is a best practice to use at every property to limit bids being reduced. The first placard must describe the room and the total amount of debris in the room and capture as much of the room as possible. Supporting photos of the debris with placards are taken without the cubic yards shown on the placard as well. The end result is that all placards with numbers will add up to the total cubic yards you are bidding for the property. For FHA post-sale properties, photos and placards should accurately show the process of the debris removal. Placards should also be used to show the measurements of the container if total cubic yards are over 10. The placard should include length, width, and height, and should start with stating how many cubic yards the container started with. You also need to include progressive load photos at one-fourth full, half full, three-fourths full, and full. The placard should end showing the final load count. When submitting a bid for any work, you should always take photos at a distance and close up. If submitting a bid for damage found at a property, provide photos of the damage as well as the source of the damage. It is important to remember that a full and complete bid is one-third detailed description, one-third detailed dimensions, and one-third detailed photos. Photos should be taken throughout the entire process while work is being completed. You are required to provide before, during, and after photos taken from the same general angle and location. Ensure that all photos are clear and show all conditions that exist at the property, as well as all work being completed. I hope you found this course to be helpful. To learn more about completing services at a property, view our additional courses.